Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, welcome. I'm Tanya, doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 10, 6, and 5. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more intentional lifestyle, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. In today's video, I'll be telling you a little bit about the newly revised How to Teach Art to Children by Evan Moore. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that I've been using Evan Moore for over three years in our homeschool, and I really, really like them as an educational publisher because they create quality content that doesn't take up too much of your school day. This past year, I became an affiliate of Evan Moore, and what that means is that if you click on my affiliate link in the description box down below, to look at this notebook or any other notebooks and you purchase something from Evan Moore, I do receive a small commission. However, I am not an employee of Evan Moore and any of the opinions I give you are entirely my own. This is a new book to me. This was newly revised in 2019 and I fully intend on using it because I don't know about you, but art is one of those areas where it sort of goes by the wayside sometimes. Like we do a lot of crafts, but we don't really um, study like elements of art, like line, shape, color, value, texture, form, and space. Honestly, because I don't know that much about that type of art. My husband, on the other hand, does. So I might actually commission him to, to work on this workbook with us. This workbook, unlike many of the other Evan Moore workbooks, is printed on a very glossy, thick paper. And it's also um, designed to be used over time. Like you could reuse this book for years and years and years. There's no reason to write in it per se. Before I keep going, I should mention that this book is designed for elementary school. So for grades one through six, but I'm sure if you have a kindergartner, you can wrap them into it. They list out a bunch of materials that you'll need at the beginning. All the artist tools are things any homeschooler probably already has, like scissors, paste, glue, stapler, tape, etc. And then painting supplies are tempera paint, watercolor trays, sponges for printing, uh, gadgets for printing, I'm not sure what that means, uh, trays or plates for mixing in new colors, and that can just be paper plates, I'm sure. Here you have variety of papers so construction paper paper bags tissue and toilet paper wallpaper wrapping paper cardboard newspaper magazines tag board i generally save a bunch of this stuff in um, a recycling bin in the garage and then a variety of craft craft supplies like beans buttons material scraps yarn string craft sticks pipe cleaners and straws again all things that you probably already have on hand there is a glossary at the beginning and then you go through and as you start this book it does tell you how to use part one so you can preview the element like one of the elements of art like line shape color value texture form or space you share the definition you share some fine art examples that are included you describe the experiences like you tell them the directions for completing the activity but don't make a sample basically allow them to be creative with it and then there's art experiences so what they're actually going to do the activities and then we display them the first element discussed is line there is a little table of contents for it so it goes through different lines line designs curves and angles curved or bent line delight creating a maze and creating a bookmark so you have this definition and then you have the very first activity so you can reproduce this page for each of the children to use Honestly, I don't generally reproduce pages this simple. I'll probably write it into their art book and just freehand it myself to save time. Now they have a chance to draw a line of each type and they can do it like this model that's illustrated for you here. The next activity is line design. So you have the materials listed here, shelf paper, construction paper, felt to pens, glue, and scissors. And they basically construct their different types of lines where one section has diagonal lines, straight lines, and horizontal lines here. Here you have curves and angles being illustrated. This reminds me a lot of the Waldorf form drawing. So if you have had experience with that, it's that type of practice with lines. Here you have curved or bent. Here you have line delight, where they use the lines to make an actual design. This was, I thought, very fun. You create a maze, so you tear three blobs from a rectangular piece of paper, and then you form an outline around them where you go around and around. I used to do this in class when I was younger just to, <laughs> to doodle and waste time. And then finally you make a curved line bookmark out of different pieces of construction paper. So these are all very simple activities, but activities that I, not being particularly artistic, would think of myself. The next section is about shape. And I'll just give it a quick flip through so you can see um, some of the different activities that are talked about here. So I like that they talk about concepts like positive and negative shapes. There is a shape search that they can do where they have to find in their house like different things with these shapes like a circle they could find the clock or a door for the rectangle. And then we move on to color. 
they start off with teaching children about the primary colors and you move on and you make a lot of different art pieces with the primary colors, including like a flag, before moving on to secondary colors with a color wheel. I like that all of it's right here for you if you um, need it, but it's in the book. So if you use it in multiple different years, it's all right here. There's nothing for you to print out. You just have to copy it. Then there's a sheet for color experiments. I know my kids will love doing that. Gradations, contrasting color. And it's really minimal setup, right? Because basically you just need this sheet and some colored paper scraps, etc. Here you have a collage that they make out with mostly warm, all cool, mostly cool, all warm. Really fun art activities actually. And then it goes on to your favorite palette so you can mix any combination of colors, decide what you like to see. Are you more of a warm color person or a cool color person? A tertiary color wheel and now we're moving into much more complex things. Here you have the whole spectrum prism art and learning about color value. So gradations of color. Um, you can paint in all one color. You can mix colors with white. You experiment with shading and shapes. You move into texture and they do a lot of activities with rubbing, repetitive tiles of texture, printing texture. Oh, they have a textured paint collage, very Eric Carl style. Texturing a tree and animal collage shape rubbings. We move on to the element of form. There's three-dimensional activities like making a pyramid. There's a lot of these three-dimensional foldable activities at the Dollar Tree if you guys are interested, some that are far too complicated for me to do. There are some activities with clay like a pinch pot and then we move into space. So there's overlapping collages here, perspective, one point, um, layering cutouts to create perspective, a city in perspective. So part one goes through seven elements of art. When you move into part two, it really focuses more on different artists and cultures and types of art. So you still have art experiences, but they're generally focused around um, a characteristic of art or an artist, etc. So here you have Paul Klee, and then they do their own version of that. Mondrian, Van Gogh, the ancient Egyptians, so you have a hieroglyphic alphabet here. Um, the African Ashanti people. You have Matisse, Da Vinci, Degas, Chinese bookmakers, Faith Ringgold, Cezanne, Matisse, Picasso, the Anasazi, Escher, and Tessellations, Oldenburg, the Aboriginals from Australia, Roman tile workers, Georgia O'Keeffe, Andy Warhol, Vincent Van Gogh, prehistoric peoples, and there's no reason to do any one of these in order really once you get to part two. Um, you can organize it in any which way that you want it. I actually am really looking forward to using this book. We fold in activities little by little over the year, so right around November. Now we've gotten about a month and a half of school under our belt. We've had a lot of visitors, so it's been all over the place, but this seems like a really nice orderly progression through art, especially for someone who's not so great at it like I am. And so I'm looking forward to using this with my children. I if you are interested in more art books for your children, Evan Moore does create artworks for kids, which has a lot more of like craft type art where you have printing, painting, weaving, recyclables, nature, and clay. And there's also art for all the seasons where you have year round thematic art projects for the different seasons and holidays that you'll encounter. So I'm super excited to use this. I've definitely neglected art in our homeschool. Um, like we've done pottery classes, we've actually done art classes, but in the house, we have done much more crafty stuff than art stuff. And I would like to teach more art stuff. So again, if you are interested in this book by Evan Moore or any of the others, go ahead and check out my affiliate link down below in the description box. I really would appreciate the support. And as always, you guys, I do value your time. Thank you so much for spending some of it with me and I wish you the very best day.